So, hello everybody. It's really a pleasure uh, to have you all uh, here in this uh, webinar. And uh, you already know that um, I will uh, be speaking a little bit about the I-Ring and I would like to uh, share with you my experience with the device. And I would like to uh, show you how uh, this device can actually very nicely address uh, the surgical uh, challenges um, of the uh, small pupils. Uh, so Nick has already um, given uh, you some questions and I think that uh, we should really start uh, this talk by maybe looking at the re results um, so that I know a little bit um, um, uh, how much uh, you are familiar with the use of um, such surgical devices to um, uh, to uh, open the pupil and I see that yeah actually uh, most of, uh, of of the attendees are actually very well familiar um, I noticed with the uh, various surgical options uh, that uh, you have available and I think that uh, most of you actually use such devices as much, as much as I am using these so let's really get started and let's talk a little bit um, about the eye ring Let's just see how we can move forward. So these are uh, my financial disclosures. And you all know, yeah, I've already seen that uh, from the questions that um, uh, small pupils are ob obviously one of the greatest challenges uh, facing ophthalmologists whenever we are performing surgery on eyes. Such small pupils can indeed add much complexity and difficulty to many procedures, especially cataract surgery. And therefore we as surgeons uh, definitely require devices which can very effectively open such uh, troublesome pupils uh, to really um, undergo very safe surgery in our patients. Uh, therefore, pupil expansion devices have become essential tools for cataract surgery, especially in patients where the pupil does not really dilate um, properly. Obviously, surgical options are not uh, really the first option when it comes to small pupils. First of all, I would always recommend to inject adrenaline into the anterior chamber and to see whether this can also lead to a sufficient dilation um, of the pupil. Afterwards, you can always dilate the pupil using viscoelastic uh, devices and then you can also use pupil stretching to dilate um, the pupil and if all that is not working then I think you should really think about uh, using a, a surgical device to dilate the pupil. Obviously we have several options available. I think most of you are obviously familiar with the iris retractors and obviously iris retractors have worked quite well in the past but there are obviously certain uh, downsides to these devices. First downside is for example that you require four additional in, uh, incisions in the cornea to really enter the eye and to place um, these iris retractors. So you have four additional wounds left to the eye and it's rather a traumatic option here. Yeah? So when you require four additional um, incisions. Furthermore, you know that um, these iris retractors are indeed quite sharp and after surgery you can really uh, see after surgery sometimes damage that is left behind to the iris um, uh, tissue. Sometimes you will see patients where the um, um, uh, sphincter of the pu uh, pupil has really um, uh, obtained some damage due to the use of that uh, devices. Another disadvantage of these devices is certainly also the fact that you don't really have a round pupil but you rather have this diamond shape. So you have to do surgery under conditions which you are not normally used to. And another disadvantage that I also think is quite important is the fact that these iris retractors pull the iris tissue upwards. So whenever you are entering the main wound, especially with the FACO handpiece, you could quite easily touch the iris tissue and do damage to the tissue. So uh, that's certainly also a disadvantage of the device. Another good option that is available is certainly the Malugin ring, one of the first um, uh, very good surgical uh, devices which can uh, nicely dilate the pupil. And you can see from that image that um, it also uh, obtains quite a uniform uh, round uh, pupil opening. Uh, so in that regards, the device is quite good. But the ones that have used the device also know that although this device can enter through the main incision, so you don't require any additional incision, that this material is quite hard. And some of you might have had the same experience or might have seen videos where this um, hard uh, material can actually do harm to other ocular tissues, such as the corneal endothelium, the iris, or also the um, lens, uh, which is uh, still in place at uh, that image. 
Another surgical option would, for example, be the use of the ASEA pupil expander. You see that once again, you need additional incisions. Yeah, if you are not performing your paracentesis in uh, this um, uh, position, and I think that most of you agree that this rectangular shape of the pupil is not really ideal, and also this device is indeed also quite bulky. The device that I would like to talk about today is the um, eye ring, and I think most of you have either seen it before or maybe have even um, had some experience also with the device. A great advantage of the device is certainly the fact that it's suitable for an insertion through a 2.4 millimeter incision. You do not require any additional incision and you also do not have to enlarge your incision. You just do normal cataract surgery with your normal incision and you can use that device. The eye ring allows you a 6.3 millimeter field of view, which is indeed quite um, large. The great advantage of the device is that it's very easy to use. It comes with the inserter and the the only thing that your uh, staff has to do is to pull this button backward and then the device is um, actually, uh, the inserter is fully loaded with the eye ring and you can as a surgeon then apply it uh, to the eye. Another tool that you would need is a Sinsky hook. Yeah, you can either uh, directly order that from uh, from uh, BVI or you can uh, use your own one Yeah, that is up uh, to your uh, preference. Um, there are many advantages I would say to the eye ring in my opinion in a very important advantage, certainly the fact that it's a very atraumatic option. Uh, the eye ring is made of polyurethane. This is a very soft, but at the same time resilient material. It is very gentle to intraocular tissue. And I can say you, although I have used that device already many times, I have never seen any damage done to ocular tissue uh, by this uh, soft material. The eye ring has four channels and these fixed channel heights does not compress and pinch the iris during the insertion or the removal. The eye ring also comes with an enhanced patient comfort and ease of use. It's designed to remain planar in the anterior chamber, therefore the corneal endothelium, uh, which obviously is, in ri is at risk when using such devices, is nicely protected. The, it completely, over 360 degrees, engages the iris and therefore eliminates distinct stress points. So after surgery, you will really not see any damage done to the iris sphincter or the iris tissue. You will see a uniformly round small pupil at the end of surgery, and I would say that this is certainly a big advantage. Also, you will see a uniform and round pupil expansion during the use of the device. Yeah, so you are doing um, cataract surgery under the conditions that you are normally used to. The iris is not lifted upwards. So when entering the wound through the main incision with the phaco handpiece, for example, there's no risk that you damage uh, the iris because the iris is lifted upward. Another advantage is certainly the fact that it's so easy to use. Procedure is indeed straightforward. I think that a great advantage is the fact that the device can be used single-handed. You can insert it single-handed, you can engage it single-handed, and you can also remove the device single-handed. I think especially in difficult cases or and or in cases with local anesthesia, that is definitely a great advantage if you can use your second hand to stabilize the eye. There's also minimal preparation time for the insertion required by the surgical team. As I said, the assistant only has to pull this button backwards and then the iron is directly loaded into the inserter. You do not require any additional incisions, so it's a very atraumatic option. The use of the device is very intuitive. You can very easily engage the device and disengage. And the only device that you need additionally would be the Sinsky hook. You see that the iron is made of a green color and they chose that green color because it also provides excellent contrast and visibility. The use of the device is very fast. The design and the material facilitate a very fast insertion and removal of the device and the learning curve is indeed very small. I think once you have the device in your OR, you use it once or twice, you're already familiar with it. I would say that any anterior segment surgeon who has done several surgeries will get very well along uh, with that uh, device. 
So let's have a look in more detail how that device is uh, used. So after, for example, injecting adrenaline in the anterior chamber and viscoelastic material, and you notice that the pupil is not really dilating, then you would think of the use of the eye ring. And the first thing that you do is after injection of the viscoelastic material into the anterior chamber, that you introduce the inserter through the primary incision, which you normally do not have to enlarge. You then position the tip centrally, and then you release the eye ring into the anterior chamber. Afterwards, you completely retract the prongs and you can do that by simply turning the injector and then retracting them. And then you retract the entire inserter from the primary incision. Afterwards, you will need the um, Sitsky hook to secure the channels to the iris. The company recommends yeah, first to um, secure the distal channel and then the proximal channel. In my opinion, I think it doesn't really matter what uh, channel you uh, secure first. The material is so soft and I would say that any way, uh, you use, uh, uh, for, uh, any way that you use to fixate the device will work quite uh, well. Afterwards, you then secure two lateral channels and you then see that the pupil is uniformly uh, dilated. So let's have a look at a surgical video where I implant and fixate uh, the eye ring. You already see that this is indeed a case where the pupil is not really very well dilated. And um, you probably all agree with me that once the pupil is in that stage in the beginning of surgery, obviously you could go ahead and uh, do normal surgery, but oftentimes the pupil really gets very small during surgery and you unnecessarily put the patient at risk. So um, I would always recommend when you are in doubt and you are not sure if the pupil is very well dilated rather use a device yeah, because you are no, doing no harm and rather a lot of benefit to your patient so you can see that you can easily use a single-handed approach yeah so in local anesthesia cases you can fixate the eye and you can then see how the eye ring is then released in the center of the eye you see that it's very soft material and you are doing really no damage to the iris tissue the inserter is then removed and then you need your um, Sinsky hook to really secure the channels to the iris. In this situation, I start with a proximal one uh, and then I go to a lateral one. But as I said, yeah, I, in my opinion, you can do that uh, whatever way you prefer um, to uh, fixate um, this eye ring uh, to the iris. Yeah, you then see that the is nicely in place. Your pupil is now well dilated and you, you can very um, easily now proceed uh, with normal um, cataract surgery. So afterwards, you can then continue with cataract surgery. I always recommend to re-inject viscoelastic material because during manipulation um, of, on the eye ring, there is a loss of uh, viscoelastic material in the anterior chamber and you want to make sure that enough viscoelastic material is in the anterior chamber. You see that the pupil is uniformly round, yeah, so you can very easily now continue uh, the capsulorexis. Um, so you can use your normal technique uh, for uh, any way of capsulorexis that you are performing. You're always in full control of the capsulorexis. You see that the field of view is so large, yeah, that even in the larger rexis, you can always uh, see uh, where the capsulorexis um, is going. And the nice thing about uh, the device is then that you can easily continue uh, with the normal steps of a cataract surgery. You can see that uh, I'm now leaving the eye ring in place while performing um, a phaco emulsification. And you see that the device is very well in place and it does not really uh, come out um, of, the, um, uh, of the iris. Uh, what I would recommend yeah, is always uh, to place the eye ring quite early uh, during surgery. It's obviously possible also to to inject uh, the um, eye ring once the capsulorexis um, has been done. Uh, but in such cases, you have to be careful yeah, not to secure these channels by accident to the capsulo capsulorexis. Yeah. And so I always recommend yeah, rather use that device earlier, although I have also used it later in the course of surgery and I have not really had problems. If you by accident secure to the capsulorexis, the material is so soft, 
I have not ever seen a torn capsule yeah, uh, due to the um, eye ring uh, placement. Afterwards, then uh, the lens is implanted into the capsular bag. And uh, once again, you see that uh, the device uh, nicely still remains in place where we have uh, left it in the beginning um, of surgery. After um, administration of the intraocular lens to the capsular bag, then um, you should remove the device. I always do that prior to removal of the viscoelastic material. And there are several techniques. One of the techniques that is also recommended by the company is first of all to use a Sinsky hook to disengage the distal channel and then place the eye ring onto the anterior iris. You then proceed to disengage the proximal channel and then the lateral channels. And afterwards, you can then enter again the anterior chamber with the inserter. You extend the prongs over the eye ring before positioning the cannula platform under the hinge. Then you can nicely capture the hinge between the prongs and the inserter. And then you can uh, completely draw the eye ring into the inserter before withdrawing it uh, from the primary incision. And once again, please notice you do not read any additional inject, uh, uh, any additional incisions. You can simply use your main incision and make sure yeah, that you don't throw away the inserter when you administer um, uh, the eye ring because obviously you will need it for the removal. Yeah, so your staff should know that uh, it's not advisable to throw um, the inserter away. There are two advanced techniques. Um, I don't really think that these techniques are very difficult. I, in fact, prefer these uh, two techniques because they are much faster for the removal of the eye ring. My favorite technique is the so-called one-step technique. With that technique, you first of all introduce the insert into the anterior chamber with the eye ring still fully in place. You then grasp the distal hinge at this time, you have to make sure not by accident to grasp iris tissue. And once the hinge is then grasped, you can then uh, use the prongs to fully retract the eye ring into the um, inserter. The other technique is called the so-called two-step technique. And in that technique, you first disengage the proximal channel from the iris using the cannula platform of the inserter. You then grasp the proximal hinge between the prongs of the inserter and then fully retract the ring into the cannula. So let's have a look at a surgical video where um, I remove the eye ring. You already see that the inserter with the prongs um, released are already in place. And you can uh, see that this is the area where I will uh, then uh, grasp um, the, uh, the, the eye ring. And so I have to make sure yeah, that I don't grasp the eye ring. And when you use this one step technique, you will notice that the iris, uh, the eye ring flips in the eye, but it's so gentle that device that there's really not done any harm to um, any um, ocular tissue. So let's have a look at two cases yeah, where we, for example, use that device. The first case is a case you nicely see the pupil is not very well uh, dilating. So I use the one-handed, single-handed technique to stabilize the eye and then to implant uh, the eye ring into the anterior chamber. Then I use the Sinsky hooks to secure the channels to the iris. With the um, eye ring in place, cataract surgery um, can nicely and easily be done. Then you implant the lens just as normally into the capsular bag. And prior to viscoelastic material removal, so you then should remove the eye ring from the eye. In this case, um, I use the uh, one, step, uh, one step technique. You see that uh, the um, iris is grasped at the distal, um, uh, distal part of the eye ring and then it will flip. Um, but you can this way easily grasp uh, the eye ring into the inserter. And after viscoelastic material, you nicely notice that the pupil has not um, any damage at all. It's still completely round. And you also see that the pupil is indeed quite small at the end of surgery. So I think it was a good decision uh, to use that eye ring, for example, in, in this uh, situation. The second case is a um, case with, um, post, uh, with uveitis in the past. You can uh, nicely appreciate these uh, posterior synechia in that case. And obviously, prior to the use of the eye ring, you would obviously have to remove these synechia. Once these synechia are removed, you then use the inserter to implant the eye ring into the anterior chamber. 
you, you can nicely see that a very well pupil dilation is achieved. Cataract surgery can be done just as normally. And in this case, we use this two-step technique to remove the eye ring. So the proximal part of the iris is grasped. Uh, with the prongs and you can nicely see that the device is then pushed back into the insert and at the end of surgery once again you notice that there's really no damage to the iris the pupil is still uniformly round so a very atraumatic and safe option uh, for our patients so in conclusion the eye ring and that's a major um, advantage is so easy to use yeah i would say there's basically no learning curve any anterior segment surgeon can very easily adapt uh, to that device insertion as well as removal of the device is very safe very simple very intuitive and it also can be even done uh, single-handed this is especially advantageous in difficult cases or in local anesthesia cases where the second hand can be used uh, to stabilize the eye. The use of the device is very atraumatic. There's basically no stretching or misshaping of the pupil after re the removal of the eye ring. And I think you have seen various images and uh, surgical videos now and you can always appreciate um, how little or literally no damage is really done uh, to the um, iris tissue. Thank you very much for your attention. And I think, Nick, that we um, also have um, a small discussion and some questions still planned for the end of this webinar. Yeah. Um, so uh, thank you very much for that very uh, concise, um, uh, clear presentation. Um, yeah, we do have some questions asked. Um, by all means, if people have additional questions, they can send them through and we'll try to get through them. Um, the first one I think I can probably answer, but um, I'll ask your opinion also. Um, is is the eye ring available in multiple sizes? Um, so I, I can answer from BBI yeah, maybe, perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, uh, no, it, no. It's, oh, there's one one size of eye ring only. Um, yeah, I can tell you from my experience, I've never had a sizing problem. Yeah, um, there might be situations, uh, very strange situations where it's difficult, uh, but I've never had a sizing issues. And I can tell you, yeah, from the time that we had the, that device available, we have basically completely switched to that device. I maybe use um, iris hooks once a year, yeah, when there's a very, very small pupil and I cannot really open that to insert the eye ring. That would be a situation where I still require iris hooks, but in all other cases I would really say that uh, the eye ring is the safer and much easier option okay. also time-saving option right um, uh, a question now um, is, is there any benefit uh, from the eye ring in preventing extension of the rexis um, as I have said, yeah, um, you, um, I always recommend yeah, to um, directly um, start a surgery with implanting the eye ring, not performing the rexis first and then implanting it afterwards because it's really an issue. Sometimes you can, when you already have done the, uh, the rexis, you can insert by accident the eye ring into the rexis. I've also had that situation several times and I can tell you this uh, situation has never destroyed the rexis. Yeah? So I have not had any problems. Yeah? I normally when I notice yeah, that uh, one, uh, one channel is uh, secured to the capsular rexis then I inject viscoelastic material again and release it and with that I have never had any uh, problems so far. Okay. It's a very gentle tissue, yeah, that's the very gentle material. I think that's the major advantage. I think it's very unlikely, yeah, to damage any uh, structures in the eye because it's such a soft material. Okay, thank you. Um, another question, uh, can you please tell us what type of anesthesia is needed for eye ring placement? Yeah, you can do that in, in all types of anesthesia. Yeah, you can do that obviously in general anesthesia. You can do that in local anesthesia and you can do that in retrobulbar anesthesia. Uh, we also use that in uh, local uh, drop anesthesia. Yeah? So there's no specific um, anesthesia uh, required. That's great. Thank you. Um, uh, does a round iris immediately post-op translate to better outcomes for the patient? 
Yeah, I, I, I think um, especially if you are a high volume surgeon and you are also referring your patients back yeah, to other ophthalmologists, it gives a much better um, uh, image yeah, to your surgery. When you use uh, devices such as the iris hooks, you will actually a lot of times after surgery see that the pupil is not round anymore. And obviously the, pa uh, the, uh, the, sur uh, the ophthalmologist who has referred the patient to you sometimes does not really remember in what condition uh, the, the patient was referred to you and then he gets the patient back and he noticed uh, the pupil does not really uh, look uh, very round anymore there's really damage to the uh, to the iris down so in my opinion uh, certainly for the ophthalmologist looking at the patient it's a better outcome and I have in the past obviously seen patients yeah especially if there's a very light iris who have complained about the pupil shape after surgery so I would really say that it's also advantageous uh, for the patients I would say in terms of better vision yeah maybe it's not really a device yeah which, which will enhance vision but that's not really the the point of that device yeah i would say the surgical trauma is less yeah you do not require four additional incisions to place for example these iris hooks so i would say that a healing might be a little bit uh, faster also when using the device okay that's great um a question uh, when using the one step removal technique is there any danger of the iron moving upwards and scraping the endothelial cells no actually it moves downwards yeah um, so you are moving um, on uh, you are moving with the inserter on top of the proximal part of the iring and then you are uh, retracting the iring from the distal part so the iris will really uh, the iring will really flip downwards towards the direction of the um, intraocular lens and as i have said the great advantage of that device is it's so soft and gentle i have never really seen in any situation done damage to ocular tissue by that device yeah? Uh, that's in contrast in the malugin ring it's a hard material yeah? so when you are touching the endothelial you will certainly see a huge damage and that is not the case yeah with a soft material yeah but as i said in the two uh, one step technique uh, there's no risk touching the endothelium yeah the iron will move towards the direction of the uh, the intraocular lens okay that's great um, a question here an interesting one and i think uh, driven by something you mentioned in your presentation. Uh, if there was a loss of the inserter, could the eye ring be cut with scissors and pulled out? Yeah, I've never had to cut the eye ring. Yeah, but um, obviously, if I had that situation, I have, I have not had that so far. Is uh, yeah, I would in that situation disengage the the uh, the the eye ring from the uh, pupil using the Sinsky hook. Yeah, and then with any forceps, I think you can easily pull that out. You know that it's a very soft material and it will fold. Yeah, so when you are pulling it out of the incision, I'm sure that it could be cut. Yeah, but I don't think it's uh, necessary to cut it. Yeah. I would rather just pull on it. Okay, that's great. Um, I'll, I'll just ask one last one because we're very slightly over on time. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have any cases where you opt for another device uh, rather than eye ring? Yeah, I've, I, I've told you that once we had the eye ring uh, available and I'm not the only surgeon at my university, I would say all of us have very quickly completely switched uh, to the eye ring because it's much easier to use. It saves a lot of time and um, the only situation and I would say that maybe once a year where I still use iris hooks is a, um, is a pupil which is completely extremely small. Yeah, a patient with uveitis, posterior synecchi where it's a very, very small hole and I would not uh, be able to uh, fit the channels into the uh, pupil uh, opening and that is maybe once a year yeah, where I have such a small pupil where I really cannot um, enter it with the eye ring that would be a situation where uh, I would still use iris hooks but as I said that's maybe once a year okay okay well, that's great thank you very much yep um, a, a few more questions but um, I'll tr try and get those answered uh, after the event via email if I can if people have registered um, uh, just leaves me to thank you again Professor Karamnia for uh, well. a very clear and interesting presentation um, and also thank everybody on the call for sparing the time uh, so um, yeah thanks very much and hope everybody's staying safe and healthy yeah thank you very much uh, from my side as well all the best to you mm -hmm.